Hey guys, welcome back. This is Emu Chicken of Team Pandora. Tired of that laggy controller? Are you gagging for the joystick you had as a kid? Well, today we're going to have a roundup of three adapters to convert your Amiga joystick to USB. Please grab a drink and enjoy the ride. First up is the adapter by Bitfunks. It's sold on AliExpress for $23 and it comes in a cardboard box. There's not much in here except for the adapter itself and it has the label of Retro Scalar USB. It is a Pro Micro board from Arduino wired up to two DB9 connectors. As this is a programmable board, it is possible to change the firmware. We hook up the micro USB to a USB port and we can use our Amiga joysticks. Windows sees this as a USB controller, so we can use this on pretty much anything within Windows. Here we have IK Plus running on FSUAE, but it also works on Emuelic and Batocera. We're glad to see that this adapter is extremely responsive. Pretty decent. But there is an issue. If we connect two controllers, the adapter can only see them as one. We reached out to Bitfunks, and they gave us an alternative firmware which didn't fix the issue. At least they know of the problem, and we hope they can sort this in the future. Similar to the real Amiga, this only sees buttons B and C from a Mega Drive pad. Now let's try it with the A500 Mini. Will it work? Damn it. This sucks balls and I am John Lou. When it comes to controller latency, this adapter is exceptional. Zero to one millisecond of delay. The Bitfunks adapter is a very low latency device and it works great provided you don't need it for your A500 Mini. Next up is the adapter from Retronic Design. This comes at $30 Canadian and the first thing we did was update it to the latest firmware. This uses a piece of software called Mr. Switcher and we can flash on a variety of firmware. As our prime focus is for the A500 Mini, we'll install this. Alarm bells. Download the files, then extract them to their own folder, and then start up Mr. Switcher. Provided the adapter is connected, we can select one of the firmwares which we wish to add. Once we hit switch, this will become a USB adapter of our choosing. Windows detects this as a USB controller, and both Amiga and Mega Drive controllers work as intended. Using this adapter in Windows works perfectly. Punch him in the ball sack. Mercy is for the weak. A bit of action from the bonus stage. Oh balls, where are all the pretty ladies? Yep, this runs well in Windows. It also works well on Batocera and Emuelic, provided we get through this configuration screen. What a ball leg. Let's get to the A500 Mini. The controller does work in the menu screen, and we can select and load our game from the main carousel. While this feels way better than the stock A500 Mini game controller, something feels a little off. We can return to the carousel by pushing the button at the back, but as we don't have a home button, we need to insert the stock pad to load up our WHD load game. We can then reinsert the adapter and play with our Amiga joystick. This solution may not be for any perfectionist, it's like it misses some of my inputs. We also tested out another world, and while many people may not see the issue, I certainly do. What is unique to this adapter is we can change firmware. So let's try the Amiga mouse. Here's the mouse I use with my A600. And using Windows 10, it's pretty much unusable. Any movement other than extremely slow will have the mouse pointer move in the opposite direction. This can also be seen on the A500 Mini. It's that stupid wizard. He put a curse on your mouse down that Harry Potter. Let's see what makes this tick. The adapter is held together by these two screws. And yeah, it's essentially a DB9 soldered to a PCB. The firmware this came stock with had an average of 13 milliseconds latency and also had a high chance of skipping a frame. The newer firmware has improved this significantly. Let's hope they can continue development and fix them issues that we had earlier. If you want a quick and easy solution for your A500 Mini, this may be it. But if you're looking for perfection, look elsewhere. The last solution involves a male DB9 connector and a Pi Pico board. We'll need a micro USB to USB-A cable, a soldering iron, some solder, 
flux, a few random wires, and a switch. Any switch will do, they're dirt cheap. If we check Feralize GitHub for the GP2040, it provides the information of which pin does what. One for up, down, left and right, for the buttons, and also ground. We'll need to strip a few cables, and whatever we want to solder, we'll use some flux beforehand. This is like primer for solder, and it'll help us greatly. We can place some solder at the end of these cables, and now they'll be nice and solid to push through the holes. I am always ready to engage. Now slide it in nice and slow, like the new TV show Picard. Gonna throw on some flux, and then solder. I'm sure you guys can do a better job than me. Just make sure the pins are correct. GP2 and 3 for up and down. And then for GP4 and 5 is for right and left. We'll attach a black cable to ground. All of the ground pins are square in shape. We'll add two more cables for GP6 and GP7. These are for the two fire buttons. I know we'll only use one, but if you're using a Mega Drive pad, you might want to link this up. Last thing we'll add to this is the switch. We'll use another ground and GP17 on this board. This will be used for the home button and also to access the configuration screen of this adapter. That's us done for soldering. And now we need a male DB9 connector. Got this cheap from AliExpress. And all we need to do now is open it up and screw these cables in. Screw you, creepo. creepo. Lucky for us, all the pin numbers are written here. Then while checking the Amiga pinout, we can hook up the cables accordingly. I am getting flashbacks from encounters with the ball. It was quite the experience. Thankfully there were lots of X-rated video games on their system. They must have had bought those bundles from Indigal. Once we've screwed them in, we can give them a slight tug, make sure they're in properly. Or if you want to be proper, you could use a multimeter. To close this DB9 case, we'll just need to tidy up a little. Now to get the software on here, we need to hold down the little button and then insert into our computer. It'll show up as a memory card, and then we'll need to go to Feralize GitHub, go down to Releases, scroll down until you see Raspberry Pi Pico, then we save this UF2 file directly to the Pi Pico board. If you use this solution, please don't hesitate on passing Feralai a few coffees. He seriously deserves it. The firmware installs automatically, and we can use it as a controller. To get to the configuration screen, unplug it, hold down the switch, and then reinsert our USB cable. Open up a web browser of your choice, and then navigate to this IP. We're gonna change input mode to X input. This should be compatible with the 500 mini, and then click on save. Now if we check in the USB controllers, we can see it's changed to X input and works perfectly. On Windows, Batocera, Emuelic, and the A500 Mini. As we can see, this is an extremely responsive adapter. To tidy this up a little, we can use some electrical tape. Wesley has been taped up to the front of my starship for over a month now. Serves him right. No one takes my last roll out. Now this looks a lot tidier. Looks a lot like my pajamas. Amiga Joystick 2 USB adapter complete. As this is a fully functioning home button, we can push it to exit game, as well as push it to start WHD Load Games 2. Using this adapter, the controls feel fantastic. Very snappy and very responsive. Every push of the joystick, every button press was captured with precision. And even Lester's happy. Anyone would be happy with that stick. Controller latency is minimal. This controller adds zero to one millisecond. And provided you have the time and patience to solder, this is the cheapest and best solution for your A500 Mini. As we play Another World on our A500 Mini, here is a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We cannot thank you enough for all of your support. I can. What do you mean, John? I will offer all of the beautiful <laughs> ladies essential massage okay. using warm cocoa butter, hot rocks, and my fine stick. <laughs> you laughing? Um, I am being serious. Okay, so thank you everyone. We have a Patreon, a Discord, and if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. 
This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori. I am John Lu, Intergalactic Massage Man. And we'll catch you on the next video. Ta-ra. Until next time.